<laughs> Roswell Flight Test Crew, here today to take a look at the Elios drone from Flyability. Click subscribe to see our upcoming flight testing video, as well as our inside look at the Flyability training program. This video is brought to you by the Academy of Model Aeronautics. More than 80 years of protecting our rights to fly and now offering commercial drone insurance, including hull coverage and up to $2 million in liability protection. The Elios looks different than other drones because it's meant to fly indoors, in confined spaces like storage tanks, boilers, and smokestacks. This protective cage can rotate in any direction. It protects the propellers and is designed to absorb impacts, allowing the drone to roll across any surface, like a floor, a wall, or a ceiling. The whole kit arrives in this roller case, which can be checked as standard luggage when you're traveling by air. When you first unpack the Elios, you're gonna find a Velcro strap connecting the drone to the cage. This prevents damage to the gimbal during transportation, which can be caused by uncontrollable spinning. Inside the cage is the drone. It's a small quadcopter and it's an inverted design with the propellers facing downward. Notice there's a lot of overlap between the propellers compared with the conventional drone. The props are close together so that the cage is small enough to fit through a manhole. That results in a lot of turbulence, which makes this drone loud when it's flying, about 80 decibels. Inside a metal enclosure, that climbs to 92 decibels which is loud enough to cause permanent hearing loss. So always take appropriate precautions. Right in the middle of the drone's body is this cross member called the fly bar. And on top of that is a modified DJI Lightbridge video transmitter. This pushes out more power than a regular video downlink, providing better reception when the drone is inside a structure. On top of that, we have the sensor head, which includes an HD video camera, as well as a low resolution thermal camera. These LEDs are bright because this drone flies in a lot of dark places. On the back are slots for two micro SD cards, one for HD video and the other for the thermal camera and the drone's flight logs. Inside, you'll also find this DJI controller and a battery charger, which look pretty standard, although there are a few modifications. First, the joystick gimbals are protected by these rubber seals to keep the mechanism safe in industrial environments. Second, there's a connection on the back for an external antenna, which can be used to extend the operating range of the drone. Third, the return to home button is missing. The Elios doesn't even have a GPS antenna on board because you don't get very good reception in places like sewers. To receive video and telemetry, the kit includes a Samsung tablet preloaded with Flyability's cockpit app. We'll take a look at how that works in a minute. The tablet comes with an A to micro B cable, both for charging and for connecting to the controller. The kit also includes a USB charger. Inside this bag, we have five batteries, three cells, 2800 milliamp hours. And there's also a permanent marker attached. Flyability wants you to record each time you charge one of these batteries on this label and discontinue using it when you've either filled in every box or 12 months after the first use. You also get two battery chargers. Charge the batteries by plugging the smaller connector into the charger. These lights indicate the current charge status. You also get instruction manuals and a packet of paperwork tied to this individual aircraft. At the bottom of the case are five replacement frame components called pentagons. The cage is made up of these held together by zip ties. If a strut gets broken, you just remove the affected pentagon and install a new one. This drone is made to collide with things, so expect to replace a few of these. The last thing is a small case containing spare parts and tools, including zip ties and a set of earplugs, just in case you forget to bring hearing protection. Mount the tablet on the controller, then connect the USB cable. Once the battery is ready to go, insert it into the cavity in the body of the aircraft. Tighten the Velcro strap, make sure it's held securely in place. Obviously, it would be a bad day if the battery became disconnected, but even if it only shifted inside the housing, that would cause the center of gravity to change and create problems. 
Next, plug in the larger connector to the aircraft itself, making sure it's held securely by this red clip. You'll see the aircraft come to life. Traditionally, you should turn on the controller before powering up the aircraft. Flyability specifically wants us to do it this way instead. Aircraft first, controller second, and then launch the app. The app is a complete custom build. At the top left, we see the video and control signal strength indicators. And then we have the battery life remaining for the controller and the drone, as well as flight time and uptime, which starts counting the moment the aircraft powers up. There's also a status indicator and buttons to access the user guide and settings. In the lower left is a heading indicator, which by default records the aircraft heading at startup. The Elios does have a compass on board, but it's not enabled by default because you can expect severe localized distortion inside structures. Across the bottom is the altitude hold indicator, the current altitude above or below the starting point, and information about the current camera settings. By default, the camera starts recording every time you power up the aircraft. In the lower right is an indicator that tells you the current brightness of the onboard lights and a button that restarts the app, which can help to clear up video glitches and latency. So that was our first look at the Elios from Flyability. To see our upcoming flight testing video, as well as an inside look at the Flyability training program, be sure to click subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Fly safe.